Have you ever wondered why there's 12 different notes in music, but you only have seven different letters to represent them? And would it be easier to have 12 different letters to represent 12 different notes? Or would it be more difficult? Let's talk about that. So why are there 12 notes in music, but only seven letters to represent them? First of all, how exactly were those 12 notes discovered? Let me take you on a little journey in music history to explain. In ancient Greece around 600 BC, a Greek philosopher and mathematician named Pythagoras was in the proximity of a blacksmith shop. He heard the percussion of hammers and other blacksmith's tools and determined they sounded a lot like musical pitches. He then decided to go home and mathematically investigate the sounds that he heard. He discovered some very significant musical intervals, such as a perfect fourth, perfect fifth, and an octave. He also discovered that when you combine those intervals, a musical scale is created, as well as 12 different musical scales. This is said to be the birth of music theory itself. Around 100 AD, ancient Greeks started notating songs with the earliest form of music notation, and that is said to have included letters of the Greek alphabet. By 500 AD, ancient Greece was in a decline, but Rome was ascending in power and influence. They looked into the work of ancient Greeks for their knowledge of arts and other areas. A Roman philosopher by the name of Boethius rediscovered the ancient Greek practice of naming the notes of the scale and wrote about it. What he said was this, A is the lowest note that a male voice can sing, and O is the highest. By 600 AD, music was most prevalent in the church. Monks would sing songs known as plain chants. Part of their training was to memorize those songs by heart. The number of songs within their portfolio was starting to become unmanageable, and they needed to organize and categorize them. This started the practice of notating songs with a pitch notating system, minus any information about the rhythm of the song. This system was called neumes. Monasteries across Europe started using this type of music notation, and they also made their own in-house improvements on them. By 1000 AD, a music teacher and theorist named Guido of Arezzo developed a system of drawing lines on a page and square note symbols that eventually evolved into a four-line staff that replaced the Neum system. By the 12th century, five-line staves like the ones we have today were being used. Key signatures were also being introduced, but weren't fully developed yet. By 1300, a system to develop pitch and rhythm was born. Time signatures were also created to indicate rhythms in duple and triple meters. By this time, the musical alphabet was in a fully developed stage which only consists of the first seven letters of the English alphabet. It was an evolution of the process of documented music that led to the use of just seven letters. By 1600 AD, music notation became more refined and really progressed. Oval notes on the staff, key signatures, and time signatures became more advanced. And by 1700, classical music was evolving. Dynamic notation was starting to take shape and look very much like what we see today in written music. By 1900 AD and beyond, we have had a musical notation system that is continuing to evolve not only in the written form, but through technology and actual sound. It's easy to forget that written music was developed to record compositions and ideas because there was no way to capture it audibly until later on in history. But today, there's no limit. You don't need a studio or even a wall outlet to plug in a tape recorder. You can be thousands of miles away from civilization in a desolate area with no electricity, and at the push of a button of a digital device, you can document any pitch in music. Well, we've moved pretty fast through notational music history in our time machine, but it makes for a clear understanding how recorded music on the page has evolved. Now, getting back to these seven different notes, it makes sense as to why music notes would be represented by only seven different letters. Because of the science and mathematics of sound, there are only seven different notes in the diatonic scale, also known as a key of music. Each one of those notes can be raised or lowered also known as flatted or sharped. Imagine if there were no sharps or flats, and each chromatic note was named after a letter of the alphabet that ascended up to the twelfth letter of the alphabet. You would have twelve letters instead of seven, 
In order to name the notes of any given key of music, you would have to skip the letters that weren't in the key. That would mean having a unique alphabetical pattern for every key of music without any logical sequence. The fact that the same letters are used in every single key of music make it much easier to learn and understand. Beyond the key of C major, there's a series of sharps and flats in every key. But the consistency of the musical alphabet has to be the greatest invention in written music. Why? Because it makes music far more uncomplicated than it would be otherwise. Don't you agree? Music and music education is evolving now more than it ever has been in history. In fact, there's no one right way to learn, play, compose, perform, or be engaged in music today. Here you can find out about a visual method of learning and playing the piano called Color Score. Go learn about it for yourself. Well, my name is Greg Lee with LearnColorPiano.com. Until next time, go play.